Hello, it's Tuesday afternoon. I am a Nana, and I love to read children's stories. And so, almost every Tuesday afternoon, I pick a book to read to you, the children. And if you have children in your home, gather them, and let's read, I'm gonna read two stories, two new stories to me, and we are going to have fun reading stories because that's what I love to do. So I live in Utah and I live with my husband and we are empty nesters and I miss my grandchildren so I like to read stories and hopefully they catch it um, when they have time. So the first one is Olive Marshmallow. Hmm. That little girl is looking at this. It looks like a round tummy. So let's find out about Olive Marshmallow. This is Archie. Archie is a little boy who lives in a big house. Do you live in a big house? Or do you live in a little house? It doesn't matter. Just living in a house. Archie loves lots of things like planes, robots, and football. That sounds like a little boy. Now, and Archie loves his mom and dad. Do you love your mom and dad? I hope you do. I bet you do. But lately, there's something a bit different about mom. Hmm, I wonder what that could be. Uh-oh. Uh, there is one big tummy. What could that mean? What's going on? Archie wonders. Mommy looks bigger. He's wondering. See, he's looking at that big tummy going, hmm. And if you are a big sister or brother, you know what's going on. Now, Mommy's office is suddenly different too. Uh-oh. It's all in pink, and there's a crib. <gasps> Everything is pink, Archie says. The blankets, the toys, the walls, everything is pink. <gasps> and there's signs, and there's a little pink horse, and a little pink teddy bear with a tutu on. Hmm, what do you think could be going on? Why is my house full of fluffy, frilly, very pink things? Little boys don't always like pink and frilly. He likes them. All kinds of colors. He's not so sure about this pink fairy bunny. That's not what he likes. Remember, he likes planes and footballs and rabbits. Mommy shows Archie a strange picture. Have you ever seen one of those? This is your baby sister growing in Mommy's tummy. It's what they call an ultrasound. And it shows that little tiny baby inside Mommy's tummy. Ooh, Archie thinks it looks a bit like an alien. Uh, there's times when maybe it kind of does. But that little baby is in there growing and getting bigger and bigger. Uh, Archie isn't sure that he wants a baby. He doesn't want a baby sister. He likes cars and trains and playing ninjas. Do you think his baby sister's gonna wanna play ninjas? Hmm. He is absolutely sure that he doesn't like fluffy, frilly, very pink things. That's not what he wants. He is thinking that pink bunny fairy, that's not gonna be something he's playing with, is it? Well, one night, Mommy goes to the hospital for a sleepover. She takes a little bag and her toothbrush, and she says, 
she won't be gone for very long. Hmm. Off she goes with her big tummy. She also tells Archie she will bring him back a big surprise. Archie doesn't want Mommy to go anywhere. He's thinking it's going to be a little gift wrapped up in a surprise box. Hmm. When Mommy comes home, she is carrying a fluffy, frilly, very pink bundle. This is Olive, says Mommy. Ooh. Archie laughs. She looks just like a marshmallow. There she is in her pink little car seat with her pink bunny and her pink blankie. And Archie thinks she looks like a marshmallow. Why do you think she looks like a marshmallow? Congratulations, Archie, says Mommy. You are a big brother. Mom gives Archie a special toy. This is from Olive. It's a big tractor. It's something that Archie really, really likes. To Archie, love Olive. And there is Olive in her, or all Olive's in her carriage, I think is all her pink toys. Hmm. Archie's still not sure. She pick, He picks up the pink bunny. Being a big brother might be nice after all, even if it means playing with fluffy, frilly, very pink things. There he is, picking up the fairy so he can give it to Baby Olive. And Baby Olive has a, even a pink pacifier. Soon, life with Olive Marshmallow became so much fun. There they are in the swings. He's given her a ride in the little wagon. He's given her toys when she's in the walker and she gets bigger. And then they get to run together. That's when being a big brother is lots of fun. Now there are twice as many toys because now there is Archie's boy toys and there's all of all her pink frilly toys. And Archie always has someone to play with. Now that is a blessing of being a big brother and having a baby sister or a baby brother because now you have someone to play with. Little sisters are actually really great. Even if sometimes they do look like fluffy pink marshmallows. There is a lot of toys and there is Miss Olive being a princess because you know, little girls like to play princess. I know I have a lot of granddaughters and they like to play princess. I'm glad you came to live with us, Olive, says Archie. And she gives, he gives her a big hug. Olive doesn't have much to say yet, but she does give Archie a big, amazing smile. She's happy that Archie's her big brother. Then one day, Archie and Olive notice something different about Mommy. Uh-oh, there's that big tummy again. What do you think that means? It means a baby sister or a baby brother for Archie and Olive. And then Olive becomes a big sister. She's a baby sister to Archie, but she'll be a big sister to the new brother or sister. So that's Olive Marshmallow because little babies are squishy and soft, just kind of like marshmallows. Okay, my second story because we're doing two stories today is about a striped animal. And what animal is stripes like this and looks like a horse? It's a zebra. And his name is Gus. Don't kick up a fuss, Gus. Let's find out about Gus, the zebra. 
Gus was a little zebra who lived in Africa. Did you know that was where zebras live? He loved to gallop and jump around on the hot, dusty savanna. That's where they live, kind of on a desert, kind of like a prairie, kind of a combination. Not very many trees around. And he's running around, having a great time. There's a zebra family up on the hill. There is some kind of birds. I don't know what kind. And he's having a great time. One morning, Gus was playing, and it hadn't rained for ever. So the ground was very, very dry. He stomped his hoofs. There he is, stomping his hoofs. He reared up. Look at them in, on his hind legs and with his front legs. He bucked, kind of like a horse, and made the biggest dust clouds ever. Uh-oh, do you think that made everyone else really happy? Just then, Mom called Gus. Come along, dear. We're going on a long walk. But but I want to make I want to make dust clouds," said Gus, digging in his hoofs. "Don't kick up a fuss," Gus said. "Dad, it's too hot here. The grass is dry and tough, and the river has nearly dried up. So they're going to go on a long walk to look for greener pasture and water." Before Gus could say anything more, his family had trotted off to join the rest of the herd. That's what a group of zebras or horses are called, is a herd. There is lots of them. They're strung out. They walked along a riverbank and through a forest and walked nose to tail. Mom and Dad, Mom told Gus, no galloping off on your own, said Dad. You gotta stay right there in the line. Walking is boring, moaned Gus. I want to go home. Gus's family did their best to make the journey fun. Everyone wants to have a fun time on their trip. Dad sang five little zebras with Gus. And Mom sang, here we go round the acacia tree. But when Gus got bored of singing, Grandma played spy. Are we almost there yet? asked Gus. He's kind of tired of the songs and the games. We're much closer, said Grandpa. Let's play Count the Mongoose. Hmm, is that what's down here? Is that a mongoose? I don't know. I don't know all my animals very good, do I? I know zebras. But then they got stuck in a traffic jam. How can zebras get stuck in a traffic jam with no cars? They waited and waited and waited to cross a bridge. Gus got really fed up. Don't kick up a fuss, Gus. Dad said, there's nothing we can do. Because there's lots of animals on this walk making this trip. So they have to take their turns, just like we do. When they finally reached the other side of the bridge, Gus bolted. He leaped between a giraffe's legs. There's a tall giraffe and he could fit underneath those legs. Over an elephant trunk, oh my goodness, and galloped out of sight. He was done waiting. He was done being in line, waiting to cross. Gus's family was furious when they finally caught up to him. Uh-oh, he's going to be in trouble. We're going to finish this walk, even if we have to carry you, said Dad. Don't kick up a fuss, Gus. You see those lions on the hill? Hmm. But Gus wasn't going to give in just yet. There he is out playing, making some dust clouds. 
And you see the monkeys in the trees? Ah, oh, monkeys like the trees. He kicked up the bigger fuss ever. He kicked up so much dust. Look at all that dust he's kicking up. No one is liking all that dust. Eventually, Gus wore himself out. If we're ready now, we'll keep going, said Dad. We need to catch up with the others. Mom gently pushed Gus along as they continued on their journey. No more fussing, she said. At last they stopped and rested for the night. It will all seem better in the morning, said Mom, nuzzling his mane. There they are under the tree. It's night. It's dark. The stars are out. The moon is out. And they're resting from all their walking. And all that dust making that Gus was making. The next day they made better progress. Gus didn't kick up a fuss. Not much. And they crossed a river. And they trekked up and down a mountain and finally reached the top of the ridge. There they are at the top of the ridge. There's the mountain, there's the river, and they're walking. From there they could see a lush green valley. We're, we're nearly there, cried Mom. Something glistened in the sun. What do you think? Gus joined the other zebras as they bounded down the hill, leaped off the grassy bank, and landed in... What do you think they landed in? <gasps> the water hole! Gus thought it was wonderful. Look at that. That is very inviting. They walked a long ways to get to the water hole and to have all that green, lush grass. Gus jumped and dived and swished down the waterfalls. He made the biggest waves ever. We're all gonna get wet, cried Gus's dad. Splash! Don't kick up a fouse, fuss, shouted Gus, laughing. Now Gus was saying, don't kick up a fuss, like his daddy had told him. And that's the end of the story. They made it to the water hole where they had a lot more water and they had green grass to eat, not like the savanna. So that's the story of Gus the zebra. So those are my two stories today. I hope you enjoyed them. I hope you have a great day and we'll see you next time. Thanks for joining. Mwah.